Um, Dr. Ivan Sika heads up a storying work in India. He's lived in a number of countries, he, he and his wife Felicita, but they currently are working and in, in living in India. And Ivan is going to walk us through the process now that you've experienced what it sort of feels like. And he's going to walk you through what Poshman talked about this morning of how this works in a two or three year period starting with zero access to scripture. We're going to see how a strategy can, can work to, to reach a new people group. It's, uh, Twice. Yeah. A team of two people will go for two years from near culture or cross border. Uh, what we do in India is primarily find people from near culture who are familiar with the language, who may not know the language, but at least are familiar, and send them across. And sometimes we use uh, more than a team of two people. We may have two teams or, or three teams. Uh, because the, the goal is not just to create a story Bible, but to also engage the people and reach them for Christ. And these people, these teams are trained in a step-by-step -step learning process. They search for local believers or at least friendly people in the unreached group who can be their, their first contacts. Uh, during their first training, they begin to learn Old Testament stories, how to tell the stories naturally, and discuss how storytelling is done in their target culture. While learning the local language and culture, they begin telling Old Testament stories through their language helper or local translator. So they, 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 are, they go through uh, training which would help them or equip them to do that. Each team will be coached in developing a set of Bible stories from creation to Christ to the early church. Uh, so about 30 or 40 stories they, they, are learned, they, they, they learn to use uh, to teach people from creation to church. Uh, these are some of the stories we use. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same stories, but uh, these are some of the stories we usually use as a first pass to, to, to reach people for the evangelism stage, these are the first uh, set of stories we use from Old Testament and New Testament to give people a picture of God's redemptive plan, of God's plan of salvation. And uh, each team develops a redemptive theme and adds stories to address the local beliefs or worldview. We, we want to choose stories that would communicate uh, better to them. There are, there are lots of stories in the Bible and so for the first part or the evangelism part, we choose stories that would uh, communicate uh, better. Uh, and then teams are encouraged to start story groups of non-believers who want to hear these stories. Uh, they go into the unreached area and try to start groups that would listen to stories. Usually if you say it's a Bible study group, people may not show up. But if you say, I want to tell you a story, people will show up. People like to listen to stories. These story groups provide a way to test for understanding and retelling of the stories. Like I said, we may have two teams uh, in India. What we do is we have one team that's just trying to engage the people and another team uh, that is trying to translate uh, the stories and create a story Bible. But in any case, these small groups help them by giving feedback and they help them to test the stories and understand the people and the culture better. Teams are trained in word choices, Bible terms, and some basic translation issues. It's, it's very important to choose right uh, words in, in, in different languages and different cultures. For example, words like baptism. There's no word for baptism in some languages. Uh, they may be things like salvation or, or grace, uh, things like that. There are lots of words that are very, very rich and very good, but they're not found in a local language. So, how does a person translate stories and include these concepts and find uh, local words to fit them? So the training includes some of those uh, kind of things that they, they would talk about and discuss. Uh, teams are trained in leading story sessions, which include telling the story like you just saw. They first tell the story, then they rehearse the story, or they tell someone in the group to tell the story again, uh, see if someone can retell the story, 
any corrections. Sometimes the, the team members themselves or the group members would say. And discussion of the story. You ask a few questions after telling the story. What did you think of the story? Did you like the story? Uh, and then you ask questions like, uh, what do we learn about God in this story? Or oh, what do we learn about man from this story? Uh, who will you tell this story to? Uh, I remember we, we were training a group of guys from Kashmir. We brought them to Delhi for training and we asked these, these guys, who would you tell this story to? Uh, a young guy said, I'm going to tell my mama first. He says, why? He says, because I've told my father, I've told my uh, siblings the gospel, then they understand. But my mama, she's illiterate. She cannot understand. But I think stories will help her to understand the gospel. So everyone has someone in their mind they're targeting. So you ask them, who will you tell the story to? And so you, you engage them in a discussion about the story, and that, that becomes very uh, meaningful and retell the story once more after discussion to keep it fresh. So during this process of storytelling, uh, we, we try to uh, see that the group hears the story at least three times in the, in the discussion group. You already did it twice, so you're almost there. Uh, so in every story, we like to tell people to repeat it so that they don't forget the story, and sometimes when they forget, they make their own story. And we don't want that to happen <laughs> because <laughs> we want them to tell the Bible story and not their own story and not to add hands and feet to the story. So we, we repeat it. There's a lot of repetition in storytelling. And in most oral cultures, uh, repetition is part of it. They, they like to repeat stories. They like to uh, repeat the song many times. When there's a poet, poem, they like to repeat the poem. So it's, it's just part of the culture. It's nothing new. And so we, we want to repeat it at least three times. Sometimes we do it more. I've been in groups where the people will say, I didn't get it, tell it again. And old people will tell you that, yes, tell it again. So you repeat the story again. So sometimes you go up to four or five times, we repeat the story before they get it, and we want them to get it uh, straight and right. The stories are recorded on, on a simple device. We have what, uh, different kinds of machines. You, you, Many of you would have seen it, the Mega Voice, there's a Proclaimer, there are all kinds of uh, MP3 players that, uh, we, that are used for uh, sharing these, these stories with people. So they're recorded on devices, they're tested and checked for accuracy, comprehension, and word choice by a translation consultant. Uh, in, in most places, we would, uh, if they are near culture people, pastors or leaders, we would sit them together and talk through these stories and see if they think it's accurate if they have an idea of the language or else a consultant in a translation, one of the partnership uh, ministries would uh, take a look at it and just check if it's accurate because we don't want to record Bible stories that are inaccurate or give a wrong meaning. Changes are made to the stories as needed and a final recording is made of the story set. These recordings provide an oral text of scripture. We call them the oral Bible. And these stories are passed on person to person. The new believers form house churches. They often use Bible stories for worship, drama, evangelism, and discipleship. One important part of uh, the training, any story training, is also skits. We, we try to get the group to act out the story. They, they go into small groups sometimes and act the story out so that they, they, they get into the story. They, they live the story and they, they remember the sequence and all the dialogue in it. So drama is one part of it. Sometimes people write songs, right? While we're telling the story, someone will say, I have a song about this, and so they'll write it down, or they'll just memorize it, and they'll sing it out. So song, drama, and story, they all go together, and we encourage people to do that, uh, people to just create, be creative and write things. A first generation of storytellers are sharing the gospel here, like you see. Small story groups, two, three people can gather together. Audio recordings of the stories that a consultant check are called oral text, or we call them story Bibles. Digital players for broad sewing. Story sets with Bible stories from creations to Christ's return. This is the first, uh, first pass we use for evangelism and discipleship. These, these digital devices can be passed on. Uh, some of, most of them have a, a, a solar panel at the back, 
so that uh, people don't need to plug into a power source in villages where they have no electricity, they just put it in the sun. And countries like India, we have lots of sun. It just charges up, and then you can listen to them. Uh, in fact, even uh, there are now uh, uh, cell phones that have come out with solar panels that you can charge with uh, in the sun, and uh, they have a micro SD card, so you can put the stories on those micro SD cards, and people can listen to them with their cell phones. So there's there are many ways that these story sets can be used uh, for people to share. Some of some people said, just don't worry about it. I just pass it on with Bluetooth to my friends. And it just goes on and on. So the Bible can be passed on as audio files from people to people if we do a good job about it. And so that's, that's generally the strategy uh, on how we want to take, uh, take it from just a story set to uh, reaching or engaging a whole people group. Mm -hmm.